Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video I'm going to show you how to use SIV in Gigabyte's App Center to take control of your system fans on your Gigabyte motherboard. This video is uh, basically a follow-on from the previous version we did, which is how to set these fans up actually in your BIOS, which I strongly suggest you do prior to what actually doing this particular part. So if you haven't watched that video already, I'll link that in the video description. Please do check it out because it's very important to set up your fans correctly in your BIOS, first of all, so that they work correctly in Windows. Hopefully that all makes sense. So if it doesn't, check out the video and uh, hopefully it will do. But with all that said, let's head over to the computer and show you how to use SIV. Now, the first prerequisite is you're gonna to have to install the Gigabyte App Center. Now you can do that by going over to the Gigabyte page for your specific motherboard and head over into the support section, into downloads and utilities. And if you scroll down through, you'll see there is one called App Center. That is a prerequisite for things like App BIOS, System Information Viewer, Easy Tune, etc., etc. And you can see that here. So SIV or System Information Viewer is this one here and it tells you what boards it supports. And it says there, note, please install the App Center first before installing this utility. So once you're uh, installing the App Center, you can download that from here. You can then install any of these apps from the App Center, or you can download them and do it manually. The choice is entirely up to you. Just click on download, save them to a location, and you can start the installation process. So that is that section. Once you've got it loaded and it's installed, if you go down into your taskbar and show hidden icons, you'll see on the taskbar down here, we've got the App Center. So you can double click that and it will bring up the Gigabyte App Center. Currently I've got RGB Fusion 2.0 installed and also System Information Viewer or SIV for short. So we click on this one. And the first thing you're gonna find is it's gonna to want to calibrate your system fans. This is completely normal, but it will only do it once or if you make any changes to the system, i.e. adding another fan to a new header, it may well ask you, but this is definitely well worth doing, so we'll click on OK to let it calibrate the system fans. You'll find that all of your fans will ramp up to 100%, and potentially, if you can, if you've got the system visible, just make sure that all the fans spin at some point or other. When you're ready, click OK. As you can probably hear, the fans in our particular system have ramped up considerably and are very much audible. So this is calibrating the various speeds that the fans can spin at and working out what the PWM data is allowing the fans to spin at. Once that has finished, you'll find that the fans will probably be uh, relatively audible. So potentially you do want to change the settings. If you don't, it's fine, leave it as it is. So what we want to do is you can go into Smart Fan 5 Auto, in which case you've got these four presets. So you've got Quiet, Click on that, you should find your fans get noticeably quieter. You've got the standard setting, performance, and unfortunately there is also full speed, which may be useful for some people, but I think that's a little bit much. So we're gonna choose quiet for now. And for some people you might want to have a little bit more control. So we're going to Smart Fan 5 Advanced. So this is gonna give you an idea of what is going on in your system. It's gonna tell you what fans are connected, give you RPMs, etc. This particular motherboard's only got a couple of headers. So we've got a CPU and also a system one. You may find on your board, you've got considerably more of these that you can choose. And you may have one which is specifically for water cooling, such as an AIO header. So the same thing will apply across all of them. So what we've got here, we've got load profile, save profile, Calibrate, so if you add more fans, you can redo the calibration. You've also on the side here, tells you your PWM range and RPM range, or power and PWM. So for this particular fan, which is on our CPU cooler, at 100%, it spins at 2090 RPM. So this gives you the ranges. So you can go down to 0%, but it will still spin at 500 plus RPM. So this one hasn't got zero fan mode. So on the left, this is the layout of your motherboard and it'll tell you which headers or what it's actually monitoring. You can choose a different fan. So it doesn't know actually what it is or where it is. It just knows that it's another connection. So you can click on this and tell it where it actually is. So for us, it's actually a front fan. So we'll choose that. So now we know that system fan one is our front fan and the CPU one is obviously CPU one. So got nice little animations there. So some of the settings we can change, so we've got auto fan stop. So if you get to a point where your system is cool enough, you can get it so the fans actually stop spinning entirely. 
I would advise against that. Uh, it's always good to have a little bit of airflow going through your system. And also you've got your temperature interval. So this basically tells you how quickly or how slowly your system is going to react to changes in CPU temperature. If you've got a CPU which is particularly spiky and tends to kind of ramp up every now and then, you may want to increase the interval so that those spikes don't necessarily mean the fans are going to ramp up straight away. Again, the choice is yours, find out what works best for you. Currently we've got it set to three seconds, which is uh, about right. You can obviously play with those however you see fit. So let's take a look at actually how we change the fan speeds. So we've got a graph or chart here. On the left hand side we've got our workload, so in terms of a percentage, and at the bottom here we've got a line which is our temperature of the particular thing we're monitoring. So in this instance we are monitoring our CPU. So if your CPU is at 100 degrees you'll be at 100% fan speed, which hopefully that makes sense. So that is a little bit much. We don't never really want our CPU to get that high up. So what you can do is click on these and move them to wherever you think is best. So what we're going to do is I want it to be at around about 75 degrees. I don't want it to get much hotter than that. And for our particular fans, we can just move these around to get a place where it suits us best. Now, depending on your fans, you may find that they actually are pretty quiet. So you can increase this overall so that it's uh, keeping the system nice and cool, but it's still pretty quiet or inaudible. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's going to work out well for us. Currently we're spinning at around about 1200 RPM, which for this fan is about half its duty cycle. So that for us is fine. You can move these around a little bit as well, depending on where you want it to kick in. So if you want it to be kind of really specific, you could say like 20% 20 at 20 degrees, 40% at 40 degrees, 60% at 60 degrees, etc, etc. Again, entirely up to you. When you've actually set something up which uh, works for you, you will need to click on the apply button and that will apply the changes. So that is for the CPU fan. Let's take a look at our system fan. So same sort of thing here. Again, for our particular CPU, we shouldn't really ever get above 75 degrees realistically. So I'm going to set our fan to be at 100% at around about 75 degrees. And the fans we've got on here, thermal take tough fans, are actually pretty decent and pretty quiet. So we can actually increase the spin speed until it gets to the point where we just start to hear the fans very slightly. So we'll just increase these a little bit until we can actually start hearing the fan, click on apply. Because it doesn't actually do it in real time, so you have to click apply to hear what the change is like. So that's a little bit on the loud side for us. So let's just reduce that very slightly, just so we're on the edge. Click apply. Still slightly audible, so I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. And yeah, that's great. I can barely hear the system at all. So now we've got the fan set at their, pretty much the peak of quietness, but also getting some decent RPMs. So currently this one is spinning around about 900 RPM. And our CPU is again around about 1000 RPM and is basically silent. So if you make any changes, just make sure you click on apply and it'll save the settings. Now also, I should say as well, this here will only be active when Windows is running and the software is active. So if you set all this up and then you decide to remove System Information Viewer from your system, it will revert back to the settings which you've configured in your BIOS. So again, you can do either. The BIOS settings work well and you can use that if you don't want to have this extra gigabyte software installed. But if you want to have a little bit more extra granular control whilst you're in Windows, whilst you've got certain applications running, which obviously won't be running in the BIOS, you can get a little bit better idea of what's going on. You can, of course, if you want to, take a quick picture of these and then transfer these settings back to your BIOS and then remove the software. Again, it's down to you, it's really flexible. This software is okay, it updates relatively uh, often, so there may be slight changes in what you see on your screen, but if you get any problems or there's anything you're not sure of, feel free to let me know in the comments or just get in touch. So there you go, there is how to set up and configure Gigabyte's SIV or System Information Viewer and Fan Control Setup. It's actually quite straightforward and uh, it's got a lot better. It was 
not very good to start with, but they are slowly improving the software and it's less buggy and it does seem to work quite well. Again, you don't have to use it. You can configure all of your settings in the BIOS as you wish to, and those settings will transfer into Windows if you don't have any additional fan control software installed. But for me personally, I do like to be able to tweak the fans whilst I'm actually in Windows because things do run differently when you're in Windows. You've got power management settings, you've got other apps running in the background which may let the processor spike or do whatever. So yeah, for me, I find this a lot easier. Anyway, like I said, if you get any problems or there's anything which was unclear in this, please do get in touch in the comments section below. Alternatively, you're more than welcome to join us over on our Discord. It's completely free to join. You can ask any technical questions you wish there. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the channel notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.